Well, hello everyone. This is Julia here at the Boonshock Museum of Discovery coming to you today uh, to talk a little bit more about matter. So I know yesterday we talked a little bit about matter. We talked about what makes matter matter. So it is anything that has mass, which simply means that we can put it on a scale and weigh it and takes up space. So if we can stick you on a scale and weigh you and you take up space, congratulations, you matter. So we also talked about our three states of matter. So three states of matter are our solids. So that's anything that keeps its shape. So something like say my lab bench here, my goggles up here, those sorts of things keep their shape. Things like a liquid, like what I have in this beaker here, this liquid takes the shape of whatever container we put it into. So right now it's beaker shaped. If I were to say put it into this graduated cylinder, it becomes the shape of the graduated cylinder. So no matter what container it's in, it keeps its shape. And our last one is gas. And gases, they like to expand to fill up their container. So the best example is when we blow up something like, say, a balloon. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to blow up a balloon, but I'm in a lab. I'm not going to put this in my mouth. I got to make sure the science stays right here. So we are going to be blowing up a balloon by making a chemical change or a chemical reaction. So since we did look at baking soda and vinegar today, that's ex or yesterday, that's actually what I have here today. So we have our baking soda right here. We also have our vinegar. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna start with something called the scientific method. And I want you guys to think about our reaction yesterday. What do you think would happen if we did the same mixture, we mixed baking soda and vinegar in a bottle and then stuck this balloon on top. I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to think about that. Do your best guess is what you think might happen. I'm gonna make one myself. All right, I've got mine. If you're still thinking of yours, that's okay. So my best guess, also called a hypothesis, is, hmm, I think our baking soda and our vinegar, they're gonna bubble. And when they bubble, they're gonna get trapped in our balloon and that balloon's gonna expand and get bigger. So if you have a different one, that's perfectly fine. That's all the joys of science is trying to figure it out. So first things we'll need, um, we have all of our materials out here. So first thing I like to have, this is actually, frankly it says baking soda in the inside, it's a piece of recycled paper. So what I've done, I have rolled it into a cone so it has a nice little hole at the bottom and I just used a piece of tape to kind of fix it in place. So this will act like our funnel. In fact, that's kind of replacing this thing we have here in our lab. So this will be our funnel. We're going to do this inside a 16 to 20 ounce pop bottle. So this one's empty and cleaned out. We make lots of these here every day. Um, you will need a nine inch balloon. If you have one that's smaller, that's okay. If you have more than one, you might be able to test and see which size fills up faster. We have also a tablespoon, a half cup measuring cup. We also have, of course, our baking soda and our vinegar. So first things first, safety. So if you have a pair of safety glasses, if you have your regular glasses, or if you have a pair of sunglasses, we wanna make sure we put those on. And if you are lucky enough to have a pair of goggles, even something like swimming goggles might work. So we're gonna to wanna to fill up our balloon with one tablespoon of baking soda. You gotta be very careful with this part. So I recommend you can actually use your funnel like this. So you plop it right in the open part of the balloon. Plop is a very technical word. And don't squeeze it. You don't wanna pinch off the paper. So you're gonna get one full tablespoon here of baking soda. A little bit more, a little bit less, perfectly fine. You're gonna pour it into your funnel. And then you might have to give it a little bit of a shake, whoops, to get it into your balloon. If you do have a funnel, say for like baking and other kitchen stuff, you can use that too, that's perfectly fine. So not a big deal. Okay, so I've gotten as much as I can. If you do have, if you can't quite get all of it in there, that's perfectly okay too. I think I got it all, here we go. All right, 
So I've got that ready. So that's step one. Step two, we're gonna let that sit. We're gonna pour a half cup of vinegar. So pour that in. So now, make sure you have an adult help you with these parts here. So this part, we're gonna try to pour it gently into our bottle here. So I can't use my paper funnel. If you do have a plastic funnel, you can use that, and I'm gonna use it. Otherwise, just be very careful. I recommend kind of doing this part over a sink. And don't worry if you spill a little vinegar, that's okay, we use it to clean. So it'll just clean a surface for you. All right, so I've got my half cup of vinegar in my bottle. I've got my baking soda inside my balloon. Next up, I'm gonna stretch the opening of the balloon over the opening of the bottle really well. You want to make sure your balloon goes all the way over. You don't want it to fall off. All right, I'm going to move stuff out of the way. And now it's time to test our hypothesis. Are we ready? Three, two, one. Whoa! <laughs> there we go. And you can move your balloon around to make sure it all gets in there. So, my hypothesis was correct. We had a reaction down here with our baking soda and our vinegar. It released gas in the form of bubbles, which is actually carbon dioxide gets released, the gas we breathe out. Went up and it filled up our balloon, actually pretty well, I think. And now we have gas trapped in our balloon. Okay, a little bit of baking soda left. So that is how we blow up a balloon without actually putting it in our mouths. So if you do like what you've seen today, please subscribe, click the link below. And we'll see you next time here on DIY Science.